23 years ago, I attended my first demonstration of SolidWorks. And it was like, I knew that I was really seeing the future. At OMAX, we make abrasive water jet equipment. Utilize ultra high pressure water, cut through just about any material that you can think of. So SolidWorks is our design platform for all of our mechanical design and a little bit of our electrical design. It's a strong, powerful tool that we use every day. From small machine shops to Fortune 500 companies, our technology has evolved in trying to support the diverse customer base and trying to make the machines easier and easier to use. SolidWorks is very prevalent in product design. It's the same tool we use for new engineers, people coming to the company. They learn the software very easily. Within a day, you're productive right out of the gate. It's been one of the fun things about working here, getting to feel like the technology is really interesting. Thanks to SolidWorks, we're able to rapidly reuse machine data, part configurations. In terms of SolidWorks and OMAX in the future, well, we're, we're certainly not going anywhere away from one another. Looking forward to the continued advances in technology that we get from SolidWorks to help us advance our technology. Interactive models using augmented reality, identifying part numbers and components on the machines, so we see a lot of potential. Events like 3D Experience World are, are the ultimate opportunity for, for a person to immerse themselves in the culture, in the learning, new technologies, new procedures, new vendors. It helps instill and inspire, you know, a greater level in, of enthusiasm for, for the use of the, the software. Now, what I see in X-Design and the 3D Experience platform has me just as much excited today as I was 23 years ago when I first saw SolidWorks. OMAX is arguably the world's leading manufacturer of abrasive water jet machining centers. The mission of OMAX is to have a water jet machine in, in every shop, and to do that we need to keep advancing the technology. Essentially abrasive water jet machining utilizes ultra high pressure water, cut through just about any material that you can think of. We have a pretty diverse customer base, and it ranges from mom and pop machine shops to Fortune 500 companies. SolidWorks is a pretty integral tool to our day-to-day -day operation. With all of our development of product and tooling, it allows everything to be stored and tracked and managed automatically. If you need access to data and you're in engineering, manufacturing, marketing, purchasing, you need to be able to access these models to do your job. SolidWorks PDM Professional makes that possible for us here at OMEX. When I first came here, we had no document vault at all. No real file or version control. It was more difficult to see the history of the product design flowing through our system. We made the conversion to PDM and, ah, thank God. <laughs> to transition our data from the old vault into the new vault, um, and that whole process was pretty smooth and pretty seamless. SolidWorks PDM has just, it's just been a game changer. Every new part we create is going to have that part number and description baked into the metadata along with a number of other features that are handy. Being able to put in a part number and unerringly snap to it and find it, that's really key for us. We're gonna live and die by the old models that we can find. And we can integrate that CAD right into our tooling and our test equipment. The traceability of it is so useful and I can't imagine trying to go without it anymore. There's a purpose for everything and it makes our CAD data and thus the, the rest of the, the engineering processes flow ever so smoothly. 
SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional has really allowed us to up our collaboration game. The concurrent sharing of files, whether it be released or, or old and archived, have really solid stability. In the technical training program here at OMAX, we also work with technical writing and the customer-facing documentation. We use the SOLIDWORKS models that are developed by our engineering department to help compose the technical content and the drawings for our documents. We have the most current model available when we need it. We have less time interacting with the engineer and trying to find that information. So PDM is our source repository for all of the models that we need as tech writers. We have customers that look at our documentation and say, I've worked with machine tools all over the world, and you guys have the best documentation that we've seen in the machine tool industry. PDM is a breath of fresh air. We expect to continue to use SOLIDWORKS to help us advance our technology. Ciao everyone, and welcome to what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2020. I am Gianpaolo Bassi, CEO of SOLIDWORKS. Every year, we hear from thousands of SOLIDWORKS users, users like you, and we get amazing ideas, insights, and requests for what's next. So, of course, we listen. We listen very closely, and then we deliver. Over this past year, you have told us you want full digital continuity, a seamless process that takes you from design to manufacturing faster than ever. You want the freedom to innovate more, and you want to work with increasingly precise simulation to reduce the risks of product failure. So we got our marching orders, and we acted on them. And we are absolutely thrilled with what's new for 2020. It's all about digitalization and integration through a connected 3D experience platform to drive faster innovation while reducing the risk of failure. In SOLIDWORKS 2020, you'll find three main ways we are giving you the solutions you truly want and need. First, the 3D experience platform will deliver to you a connected design to manufacturing ecosystem, helping you manage every aspect of developing and delivering products from ideation into the hands of your customers. You go from concept to completed product with unprecedented speed, and you'll do it easily and seamlessly with new and connected applications, both on the desktop and the cloud. We are delivering improved performance across the spectrum for stunning speed and unparalleled functionality. And finally, we are giving you streamlined workflows to accelerate time to market and reduce manufacturing costs all while improving product quality. Get ready to dive in, discover, and get inspired by SOLIDWORKS 2020. Hello and welcome to SOLIDWORKS Live. If you're joining us here today, you're probably really excited about today where we release Solid, the SOLIDWORKS 2020 portfolio and all the great new capabilities that are coming with that. To discuss some of the new features this morning, I have several guests here with me. We'll start on the end. Uh, Nikhil Kukarni, the Director of Drawings and MBD at SOLIDWORKS, welcome. Thank you. Mark Schneider on the Product Introduction Team. Yep. My, myself, I'm uh, Jeremy Rignaris, also on the product introduction yes. team. And then we have Eric Beatty with one of our great customers, Omax Corporation. Oh, Eric, thanks. thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me, Jeremy. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so we're going to be covering a wide range of topics throughout the course of the day. This, mor this morning, we're discussing improved performance. And these are going to be things that are going to make your everyday life just a little bit faster and better inside of SolidWorks. But stay tuned throughout the day because this afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern, we'll be having a conversation about streamlined workflows. And these will be some of the features that'll make your lives a little bit more efficient. And then shortly after that at 2 p.m. Eastern, 
we'll be discussing the connected ecosystem and a lot of the other products inside of the SOLIDWORKS portfolio and how they all connect together. A few housekeeping things here. Uh, if you're joining us on social media, uh, you can post your comments and questions. We'll have moderators there answering them, and we may be answering some of those questions live yep. here on stage as well. And also, we won't be covering every single topic in the What's New uh, today, so I encourage you to go to SolidWorks.com slash What's New. There you can see a plethora of videos that cover all the great new content. And as always, every year, within a couple weeks, your local partner or reseller will start hosting a live event. So Eric, uh, you've been involved with SolidWorks for many, many years. How, how long have you been using SolidWorks? Uh, I first saw my demo in January 96, so right. almost 24 years now. So is this a time of year you get excited for? Oh, very much so, very much so indeed. You know, I, I, I start you know, setting my calendar about a month and a half out, just <laughs> figuring, okay, it's gonna be about mid-September, you know, clear my schedule, no meetings allowed this week because I don't want to miss a thing. I want to see it live, and this today, is as live as it gets. This right? is front row live. This is front row backstage live. I'm I'm totally stoked to be here. So some folks may have tuned in a little bit early and saw a customer case study that yeah. we've done uh, about Omax Corporation earlier. But for those who haven't, why don't you tell us a little bit about <coughs> what Omax does? Alrighty. Well, Omax is, and and I'm probably a little biased. Omax is the the leading manufacturer of abrasive water jet machines. So our, our equipment utilizes ultra high pressure water somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 60,000 PSI in the same garnet on your hardware store home <coughs> sandpaper to cut through just a wide range of materials. I, I think we're seeing a video right now of, of one of our newer accessories, the, the A-Jet head that is provides true five axis water jet cutting. And now that's a that's a big shift from what, you know, my background in machine design, I always thought of water jet as a, a two and a half axis process. Yep. And you guys are bringing full five axis uh, mach machining with a water jet. Oh, indeed, indeed. Plus we also offer a, a rotary axis option as well. Mm. Sure, you guys make a wide range of equipment. Today we're going to be highlighting a lot of the new features in SolidWorks 2020, showing the, uh, the Micro Max, which is a, a smaller, uh, machine, but you guys make machines that are, you, I think you said the size of an Olympic swimming pool? I, 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 would, I would say so. Our, our smallest machine is our Protomax. It has about a, a one foot square cutting area. And our largest machine in terms of the XY work capa workspace capabilities, um, 10 feet in the Y axis and upwards of 50 some feet in, in the X axis. Deal. So there's no real limitations uh, when it comes to what you can cut. Not, not hardly, <laughs> not hardly. <laughs> so I have to imagine your customers value performance, which is what we're talking here oh today. Yeah. What are some of the ways you guys use technology to increase the performance and ways customers can interact with your machines? Well, like you said, traditionally people think of water jets as being a, a two, two and a half axis cutting process. And as you saw, we, we offer both rotary and five axis capabilities. The other challenge, as it were, that, that we conquered through um, you know, software and you using SolidWorks is our, is our tilt-a-jet cutting head mechanism. Uh, we should be seeing a graphic that Unlike an end mill, which is a you know a solid cylinder, when the water leaves the, the, the nozzle on a water jet machine, it's traveling at one and a half times the speed of sound. Wow. It's gonna it's gonna fan out. And so as it as it erodes the material as it cuts through it, it introduces some taper. Well, for simply blanking out parts and and shapes like that, that might not be an issue at all. But if you need a true vertical wall on that cut, then we, we have a solution for that. Our, our, our Tilt-A-Jet cutting head was actually the very first OMAX accessory that was fully realized, fully developed, and designed in SolidWorks, starting back in 2003. And as you can see from the video, the head is constantly gimbling. It's calculating about a thousand times a second 
to swing that, that fan-shaped cone of water away from the, the, the workpiece to ensure that the, the wall of the cut is, is truly straight up and down. And it offers other advantages. It allows faster cutting as well. Wow, I mean, so you guys really use a new form of technology to deliver a different level of performance to your customers. We do our case. darndest. Yeah, and uh, customers uh, who are interested in OMAX on the What's New website that I mentioned earlier, they can go there. There's a case study about OMAX and they can learn more about your company there as well. Oh, for sure. Well, performance is important to your customers just like it is to ours. Yeah, right and likewise, Mark, we're using some cool new technology to bring new performance enhancements to our customers, right? Performance is the theme of this morning's session. So we're going to talk about performance now. And last year, one of the things that we did is we enhanced our large design review capabilities so that we could uh, open large assemblies fast. We could do that with large design review, but now we can do some editing. So some of the editing can be done directly inside of the large assembly environment. So you open an assembly fast and do some editing, and then maybe close it on, move it on, do, do whatever you want, instead of having to wait for everything to load. That was large design review. What we did this year, and kind of along the same lines, is did a similar thing for drawings. Allow you to open your drawings fast, do some detailing, close them down, get your, you know, move on to, to work on something else, go to lunch, save it, check it in, whatever you want to do. The key benefit of this is that uh, you don't need to do anything special. You don't have to have a special version of the assembly uh, or the, of, the, of the drawing. You just have to have that drawing and just saved in 2020. That's it. Okay. Let's take a look at how this works, Sure. Here. Again, this drawing is saved in 2020. This is about 5,400 parts in this assembly. We're going to go ahead and open this up using this new method called detailing mode. So this will take a, a minute or so? <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds? Watch. Wow. That's it. That, that's, that's literally it. You know, this would normally take on a very fast machine about four minutes to open. But not only that, look, oh we can access the different views. So every tab at the bottom is a different uh, dr uh, drawing sheet. I can access each of those very quickly. No regenerating, no waiting for any line work to update anything. Is it just viewing? I can do edits, move a balloon around. I can take advantage of ma uh, magnetic lines. Maybe I want to uh, add a dimension or add a note. You know, something I just want to open a drawing up, add a note, make some edits to that note to say, hey, I got to, you know, change this note, put some formatting on that. Maybe this drawing view looks a little crowded or this drawing sheet looks a little crowded. Well, just move the views around, move dimensions around, organize your drawing, get it better situated. I can even cut a drawing view from one sheet, add a sheet, move those sheets around, <laughs> and then paste a new paste that view onto a new drawing sheet. So I can use this as a way to just open my drawing up, get it better organized, reposition some things. But you probably want to edit this and add balloons and, and I dimensions, right? I want to throw right? some dimensions on there and, you know, picking edges, you know. Um balloons, you just saw it right there. You're able to add balloons as you go. You want to add dimensions, we can add those as well. Remember, we don't need the model. You don't even need the model on your machine to open this drawing up wow. in uh, detailing mode. You just open it up. What we're doing is we're referencing all the line work. All the precise line work that's under the hood for this particular drawing is all there. And now we can add, use those edges to add our dimensions. We can add a, a call out here. We can use the dimension palette. We can use the dimension property manager to make changes. Any of those commands on the command manager, such as format painter, are available to me. Not everything's available, but, you know, not. 80, 90 percent or so something is do available. Do I have to save this as a special file or anything? You don't want to save it as anything special. All you do, well, let's do one more thing. We'll okay. add, add some revisions. We made some changes here. All you do is you hit save like it was fully open. Once you hit save, we give you the option to resolve the drawing and then save it or just save it as is. Okay. Next time you open this up fully resolved or in detailing mode, all that information is going to wow. be there. That's too cool. But not only that, I can save this as DXF. Maybe I want to just open the drawing up, write out the XF for, you know, manufacturing purposes send or a PDF for <laughs> documentation purposes. Yeah, send it to your water jet. Right. And, and I don't lose any of the quality when I create like a PDF like this. You don't because what we're doing when you save that drawing in 20 Sol SOLIDWORKS 2020 is we're capturing all that information. All the line work is precise right. and, and perfect on that drawing. W without loading the whole assembly in the background. Of without even needing it on your machine. Wow. So, Eric, you guys create large drawings. And that, that's a, s for a large drawing, that's, that's a small large drawing as, 
as far as we're concerned. Small for you. Small for us, <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. So what do you think of this? Is this something you guys will take advantage of? That, that, that's it, it's phenomenal. I, I know some of them are probably watching. I've got a lot of impatient co-workers that, <laughs> you know, when something is loading up, you know, they're, they just you know, see they're, you online. yeah, they're, they're tapping their feet, you know, they're twiddling some, they, they want it there. This, this is going to calm a, a lot of, a lot of people down. And well, there's one problem. You can't go get a coffee now. You got to get right to work. That's true. <laughs> and when when we when I first learned about this, you know, I thought, okay, I've I've got time to go get a drink. You'll notice we have mugs on our desk. <laughs> That's because they knew that you know I wouldn't have time to pop off stage and <laughs> grab something while Mark loaded the drawing. <laughs> so this is really cool technology. But Nikhil, tell us about the the magic or how this came about? Because this is a different way of thinking about working yes. with drawings. So um, we, we know very well know that customers do care about performance, always. So performance is always on our minds. We are thinking, searching new uh, ways of how can we make a difference. So, but the first question we asked is what is performance? Performance, so we categorize it as two different uh, aspects of performance. One is open and save, which is uh, depends on the data, the type of views you have it in, number of sheets you have, and the complexity of the model itself. Uh, the second one is uh, interactive ones, where you are actually trying to work with the documents, trying making changes, edits into it, and coming back to the models, which could be assembly or uh, drawings. So for the first one, we rely on user data. So take what is reported that keeps coming in, the users give us the models, we, sh we open it and see what what we can, how we can improve those. But for the interactive one, we said, okay, there is small edits. Some may or may not need an update for the entire drawing. So why pay the price of waiting and updating the drawing? For example, just adding a new custom property or changing our material. And you have a, <coughs> a, sh a sheet, 11 sheet drawing ready and you had just made a small edit and you don't need to pay the price. So this is what we, took care of in 2019, where we actually watch what is updating, model updating, uh, and then make a very uh, calculated update in drawings, which saves us a lot of time. <coughs> so a, a, a multi-sheet drawing, as an example, which takes four minutes to get back because it's just very big. Yeah, it's now instantaneous. We did the same thing with assemblies too, right? This year we did the same thing. We watched what is changing in sub-assemblies and parts, and ma the top-level assembly won't make a smart update so it won't okay. do all the regeneration and make you stop in your tracks while you're just in the flow of working. So that's in 2020 customers so will so see the that performance yes, benefit so there. Yes, so assemblies well. is in 2020 and drawings was in 2019. Okay. So one of so the things in the in the detailing mode is is in uh, what Nikhil referred to is interactivity and how you interact with that drawing. Everything you touch is just right there on your fingertips. So it's it's a it's a visual feel, and Eric, you, when you play with 2020 and you know give it a go, it, it's one of those experience things that you're just like, wow, this feels really good, and you'll notice it, probably notice it more if you ever had to go back and use an older version. Or right. Mm -hmm. So, so, it so is detailing mode was kind of what is the next step to this interactive? So we said, what, where do customers spend a lot of time, and they do a significant amount of time is spent in detailing the drawings. So you have the views but you're trying to get all the dimensions, all the nodes, all the tables in it, and that takes a significant amount of time, mm -hmm. even to work with. For a large, very large, complex drawing with very uh, high number of views, it can be slow to select an edge, sure. but it can be very slow to even open the drawing just to <coughs> add detailing mode. That takes time, that takes away productive time. So that's where the detailing mode was uh, sort of thought over. Now, this is not a new concept, users who have been using SOLIDWORKS know about uh, detached mode. Yep. This is very similar to that, except there are some challenges in de uh, detached mode. Number one, you have to save the drawing as uh, the same extension as SLDDRW, which does not quite bode well with the ERP system with the single source of truth paradigm. So you can't have two versions of the same thing. So you can't work with the detached and have a resolved also. That's that's one problem. And while saving for huge assemblies, it can be a very slow process to save. To initially create the detached. Detached. Yeah. Yep. So, so there are two uh, major challenges there. That's why I think detailing more was called rethought. 
like I said, it's not a new concept, but it was a rethinking of what we can do. And we ho we are expecting that users will uh, save a lot of time doing this. For example, mm. uh, he, uh, Mark showed in the video about the save options, yep. right? So if day long, all four hours I'm doing this with a break in between, I can just save it as a uh, detailed mode uh, version and not as resolved and keep coming back over the entire day, uh, just save do uh, views and sheets one by one, finish up for the day, and then maybe save it as resolved at the end of the day. What you could do in two days probably is slashed in half now. And so what's really important is this drawing isn't any different than a, a regular SOLIDWORKS drawing. Where detached mode was, it was kind of a different file. This yeah. is just the same SOLIDWORKS drawing that you would work on anyway. Correct. Yeah, and if somebody's off working on the assembly and they make an, uh, make a change, next time you open it up in detailing mode, it'll warn you and say, hey, you know, do you want to update now or do you want to update later? So it, it's smart about that. That's and, and so if I want to use detailing mode, what do I, I mean, I, I know it's the same file. What do I, what do I have to do? Anything special? All, all you have to do is open up it up once in the resolved mode in 2020 and hit a save and say yes to the data saved for detailing mode. That's a pretty straightforward process, I, I, I think. Sounds like you could start taking advantage of this right away. Oh, that that's definitely the, the plan then, indeed. All right, so great stuff in drawings. But assemblies is another area, Mark, where a lot of people spend a lot of time working, right? Yeah, well, last year, we, like I mentioned earlier, we did a lot of things with large design review for edit mode. We've continued to add to that uh, with this year's uh, release as well for adding patterns and various things like that. But the other thing is, is envelopes. We've had envelopes for a very long time, but they weren't the most uh, easiest thing to use. So if you wanted to build an assembly that sat on something else, what you had to do is you had to assemble that something else underneath it. Sure. So you'd assemble that and then you'd start building on top. Or if you <laughs> your assembly needed to reference a location of something else at the top level, you could assemble that and bring it in or use other techniques to, to capture that geometry in its, in its uh, final position. The challenge with that is it wasn't the easiest work workflow to make that happen. So what we did for 2020 is we uh, created a new tool called an envelope pu publisher so that allows you to do this really quick. So let's take a look well at how. Let's really quick so folks understand, not everybody oh yeah. uses envelopes. An envelope is really unique in the feature tree. It's treated very differently than any other SOLIDWORKS component. So if you haven't used these, check them out in the help menu. Uh, go to my SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you could probably learn a little bit how to use those there as well. But the, they're not included in your bill of materials. They're not included in your mass properties. They look different, and then in even yeah. in drawings, we they treat them They don't even show up unless you explicitly turn on in the right mouse button menu, say show envelope. And they yeah. and then you can show them as like reference geometry. Is yeah. how with a different line situated. font. So they show it as phantom or dash yep. dot lines. Yep. Yeah. So Perfect. check them out if you haven't used them, but <coughs> let's check out this cool workflow, a really easy way to put them in an assembly. Right, so we added this new tool called an envelope publisher. So from at a higher level assembly, I want to push geometry down into a sub-assembly. So the easiest thing to do is just use the envelope publisher. I can push multiple parts from multiple sub-assemblies down into a sub-assembly, or I can push parts into multiple sub-assemblies. So you have a lot of flexibility to do this. What we have is uh, up in the upper right corner, you see this called a scissors plumbing arm that has to move in, in position around and follow the Z head of the, of the uh, Omax Micromax. What we've done is we've actually took one of the parts that were on the Z head and published it into the scissor assembly. Scissor assembly. So we, you can see the light blue part yep. there? That's an envelope part. Okay. Won't show up in a bomb, won't show up in the uh, mass, properties. mass properties. But what I really need to do is I need to open, uh, I need to assemble the end uh, effector for this arm onto that piece. And I need it to always follow and move around. The key thing here is I could publish that into that subassembly, give it to Eric, give it to someone else, and they could open this subassembly up and they wouldn't have to open the full top assembly mm. to get this. Another way I could have done this the hard way, and what <laughs> people may do is you may do it at the top level, make that flexible, move it around, try to get it into position, <laughs> save it. It's, it can be a challenge. Yeah, and you're creating all these mates at the top level yeah, assembly where by pushing the geometry just down into the subassembly, you can work in, in that discrete environment. That's exactly right. So this is, this is a, you know, a really uh, cool new feature and, and a workflow to say, hey, how can we make the use of envelopes much more easy for people to, 
embrace them and use them more often and, and basically improve their assembly you performance. Make assembly fast, you make drawing fast. Yeah, right. that's exactly right. So, Eric, have you uh, tried using uh, uh, envelopes in the past? Have you, or, I mean, obviously you've dealt with this assembly here. Oh, yeah. How do you tackle uh, this today? Uh, right now, that, that scissor plumbing assembly is a flexible assembly that contains flexible assemblies that contain <laughs> flexible assemblies. It, it, it gets pretty, pretty deep there, but um, this will be a game changer because as, as we know, SolidWorks elevates all those mates from the lower flexible assemblies up to the top level, and I may have four or five mates in that, that top assembly, but now I'm solving 40 or 50 of them. Sure. Because of the flexible subassembly. Exactly. So having the ability to publish that down in there, and now that scissor arm is no longer flexible at that level, <coughs> That's so far beyond cool. Let's put cool a couple laps down. I'm, I'm telling <laughs> All you. Right. All right. So, uh, so we've looked at drawings assemblies. You guys use SolidWorks PDM at Omax, correct? Oh, we do. We do. In fact, I'm the PDM administrator, one of them. So you guys have a, a small implementation, <coughs> or do you have a you have a couple files there? Um, <laughs> a couple hundred thousand, okay, at okay. least. And you know, because again, I I encourage folks that we vault everything from the craziest idea that'll probably never see the light of day to the next design that's going to, you know, totally upend the water jet world and put us so far ahead of the competition that they might as well just not even show up, you know. All right. Well, not, you're not multi-site, but you, <coughs> you do maybe sometimes experience like high latency across the network. Oh, very much like so. Very much so. Mark, we doing anything to help these types of customers? So Eric had mentioned we ha he has hundreds of thousands of folders or files, and those exist in folders and project folders and subfolders and <laughs> folders of folders and <laughs> files and folders. So one of the things that we've done is to improve <coughs> the interaction of how you work inside of those folders. So we're going to go into this vault here, this login. These folders contain lots of files, contain lots of folders. And in, in the past, when you clicked into a folder, you had to wait until everything loaded in, in that folder before you could dig down into the subfolders. Now you can see we're actually loading that asynchronously in the background. All, the, all those files and folders are loading in the background, but I can start poking through and finding, getting to where I want. I just need to dig down to where I need to go. The same thing holds true when I select one of the items in here. So I can go to the Contains tab, the Where Use tab, the Bill and Material, let those load, and I don't have to wait to go to another tab while the other one is loading. So that information is all loaded. It's going to stay loaded until I click on a new file to do. The same holds true when I'm working in the SOLIDWORKS environment. So in the task pane, all that access to the information that's in the vault is, is asynchronously loaded in the background, so I have quick, ac easy access to what I want to do without having to wait for the task pane to fill up with the information from that particular component or yeah, that particular th item. This is great. Uh, you can see it on there just subtly. You'll see the loading <coughs> thing. But yeah. what's happening is we're not stopping you from continuing on with your work where today... And that's what we did in the past is, you yep. know, you couldn't click into that subfolder until the whole folder loaded all that information. Yeah. So we'll pull that file information and all the description and, and, and uh, custom property type information. We'll then fill in in the background as you're poking around trying to find what you want to do. You ever run into this where you're trying to dig into a folder but oh, wait yeah. for all the files to load? Yeah. Oh, that that's for darn sure. You know, I, was, I think overall the, the theme that is emerging this morning is because I'm so plugged into the user community. Users complain a lot about performance. I think with SOLIDWORKS 2020, they're going to continue to complain about the performance, <laughs> primarily the fact that all this increase performance is robbing them of their social time, <laughs> their coffee break time, their their lounging time and um we're, we're going to be we're going to be a lot more, more. we're going to be working more. Let's yeah. Hope that's the case. So yeah. It plays in well with the interactiveness of the <laughs> thing. So you are not waiting that's key because it's the frustration of working waiting is much higher than frustration of waiting at the start of the day when you are opening files. So yep. this this yeah. interactive system plays in very well with PDM where you Click on the contains, go to the another uh, tab. By the time you click back again, you have it all filled up. Yes. So we've done 
Lots of, I mean, we always do lots of different projects on performance all throughout every right. year and, you know, for all years. And, you know, simulation is one of those areas. Sure. And, you know, every I, I know product sees performance yeah. improvements. So what are we doing with simulation? Well, I, Eric, I assume you have simulation. Yeah. You have we simulation do. usage yeah. at, at, uh, so. at OMAX, right? So, you know, maybe explain what your challenges are there and we'll see how we can solve those. Well, um, from... From my standpoint, I, I always tell people I can spell FEA, so <laughs> I, I primarily support a lot of our, our PhD engineers in, in their simulation efforts. And so one, one of the big things that is encountered is um, you need results in a particular area, but that's a, it's a finely detailed area in a much larger assembly, so to get the results you need, you need to really refine the mesh. Well, now you're looking at, you know, perhaps an all day or realistically an overnight simulation. Plus I've, I've spent all day working with the, the engineer, helping them detune, defeature the model, simplify, simplify areas enough so that, you know. So you get the accuracy where you want, want but you don't waste the solve time on some of the other exactly. things. Exactly. That's a lot of work that's, that you put into, <clears throat> or someone has to put into defeaturing a model, right? Oh, for yeah. sure. So for 20, 2020, what we did some of the, in the, some of the areas of simulation is something to help those areas there. So what we do is we allow you to have mixed mesh. We allow you to mix the mesh between uh, part, uh, different parts in your assembly. So you can have some parts that are draft quality mesh, some parts that are high quality mesh. Those are the areas of high concern. These are the areas where I want my most ma accuracy. But I don't really care about those four pillow blocks out on the corners. Those aren't as critical to me. I'll make those low quality mesh. Maybe I can save some time by not having to defeature as much, much because those are low quality mesh. They're going to not have as much impact on my solve time. So what we've done here is just do a, a quick run. And the key thing here is it allows you to build these really big, complex, highly accurate uh, simulations without having to waste time you know, doing solving. So this is the area of our concern. What we're doing is we're showing uh, a, a bolted connection to see if these are failing. We're actually using another new feature that we'll talk about later called distributed coupling. And that is another great new capability that allows you to get even higher, more accurate results. Yeah, so uh, actually distributed coupling, I think, is something that's on the, it's going to be on the website where yeah, people can go right. learn more about this. So again, I And that's where you can see some of this, in yeah. the distributed coupling uh, of demonstration, you'll see some of this performance stuff where you can use the, mix, mix the draft quality, high quality mesh. It's really, you know, kind of a great tool to say, you know, here, I just want high quality in these areas. The rest of it, yeah, go ahead and solve it draft quality. Yeah. So uh, again, there's lots more performance enhancements inside of solid inside of the entire portfolio. We spent time today on different areas of the software and different products just to kind of highlight this. But I encourage everybody. I, I mentioned it right when we started the uh, this show. Uh, go to solidworks.com/what's new. You can see tons of videos there. Um, it, it, there's so much more than what we're covering here today. I think one of the things that's interesting when we talk about performance, though, is we've shown you features, buttons you can click, workflows and ways you can change. But, Nikhil, not every performance enhancement is a feature or a button, right? No, no. So we, like I said, we every year for the, as long as I can remember, we are doing something with, with the uh, performance. It could be analyzing customer's data, making the algorithmic changes that we need to fasten it up, but it doesn't show up as a feature, or right. we can talk about saying that this is what is happening. So the best test would be that use your data in this release, go back to the, your old release, and <laughs> see if you can be okay with that. If you are not, <laughs> we have done our job yeah, for that really release. Good point. <laughs> my favorite things are the things, you've mentioned it throughout this broadcast, <laughs> is they're the things that just, or you've said it, Mark, they just feel faster. Yeah. They're not yeah. a, a button or a mode, it's a, Wow, this is just snappier. It feels better. A great example is when I when we turned on graphics boost last year, yeah. and you open up the the right. OMAX and you rotate it around. It just you know feels great. You know this feels like a little block I'm whipping around on the screen. Tum, 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 and then you turn it off or you go back, and it's like, oh my goodness, I get it now. Look how much faster and, this. And that's feels. another example where we're continuing development on yes. existing performance projects. So graphics boost was introduced in 2019. This year, there's been 
more enhancements, mm -hmm. more investment into that because we want to make that experience just as smooth as possible. Performance development will never rest, will it, Nikhil? No, it will <laughs> not stop. <laughs> we may not be able to show it, but it's, it's there. It's continuously being worked at in different ways. So Eric, how about some of your final thoughts? What do you think of the performance in SOLIDWORKS 2020? Well again, I'm, I'm just, literally, I'm totally blown away by everything and you know, everything I've seen so far just makes me even that much more anxious to get back to, to the Seattle area and put, the, put this into play, get it, get it downloaded, get it all set up for my, my install images and pushed out to my users hopefully as fast as the IT folks will let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, very good. This has been some really exciting stuff. Eric, I want to thank you for joining me here today. Thank you. Eric's going to, uh, Mark and Nikhil, I also appreciate you guys coming in thank here you. to provide commentary on some of these new features, but we're not done. We have more we're going to cover today. Eric's going to stay here with yep. me, and in a couple hours at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be discussing streamlined workflows. I mentioned at the beginning, these are going to be some of the fun features that kind of change the way you work. And then shortly mm -hmm. after that, at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be discussing the connected ecosystem. And this is really how a lot of our different tools kind of interact with one another and stay connected to one another. And so. I'm, I'm, I'm totally stoked to, to see both of those. You know, I, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, over the past day or two, I've had some sneak previews, peeks. sneak <laughs> peeks and previews. And admittedly, you know, session two has always been my, my favorite aspect of it, but um, Having spent almost two years now working on the, the 3D experience platform as well, again, I'm, I'm totally psyched for the, the connected, you know, ecosystem, the connected as well. ecosystem as well. Very cool. So if you want to stay in touch with everything we're going to be doing throughout the day, I encourage you to subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook. You can also engage with us on Twitter. As I mentioned, we're going to have moderators on all our social media channels today kind of answering those questions. Uh, and stay tuned in at live.solidworks.com. And yeah, I think that's good. We'll that's see. Yeah, I think that's going to be a wrap. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you soon.